Hello G.I. Joe and 118 scale fans, this is The Human Mechanism. So over the past month, I've just been hoarding action figures with no real motivation to open them. Primarily because I've been working on other things. But today, I'm back. So why don't we take a look at something from the World Peacekeepers line. Today, let's take a look at the Air and Sea Patrol Unit. Before we get to the boat, let's talk about everything that comes with it. It comes with three Navy SEAL figures, but the set only comes with equipment for two. And out of all three of them, only one appears to be ready to go underwater. The set includes two vests, two closed circuit rebreathers, two TAC-100A navigation boards, two sets of swimming fins, a jerry can, a laptop, binoculars, two versions of the MP5, the MP5 SD and the MP5 K PDW, a version of the MP5 K tailored specifically for the US Navy. Last but not least, and this is really weird, it appears to be an ammo canister based on a real one used during World War II, meant to hold 30 6 rounds. Strange considering everyone here is using SMGs. All the accessories that are meant to attach to the figures attach firmly, at least for the most part. The rebreathers are intended to hook onto the vests, and they feel pretty loose, so keep an eye on them. In real life, the rebreathers would actually go under the vests, as opposed to over them. I will say this, out of all the 118 scale figures MNC Toys has released, their Navy SEALs are probably their least expendable figures. I mean, they're obviously not as good as, say, the Navy SEALs from Bravo Team, but in terms of World Peacekeepers figures, these guys are pretty damn detailed. These are figures that you probably don't want to use as cannon fodder. Now, let's move on to the craft itself. MNC Toys released two boats, which use the same mold, but with different configurations. The military boat, seen on the left, and the Air and Sea Patrol unit on the right. However, years ago, both of these were marketed as patrol boats, but with cardboard insets describing the now military boat as a Marine PBR, which stands for Patrol Boat River and the now Air and Sea Patrol Unit as a Navy SEAL RIB. That's confusing and misleading, as MNC Toys appears to have reversed their real-life roles. So let me clear things up. The so-called Marine PBR, which again stands for Patrol Boat River, is not a patrol boat, nor is it relegated to the river. It's actually based on the 11M NSW RIB, which stands for Naval Special Warfare Rigid Inflatable Boat primarily used by the U.S. Marines and Navy SEALs for mission insertions. You probably don't want to be relegated to the river for that. The second boat, the so-called Navy SEAL RIB, and the subject of this review, is based on the SURC, which stands for Small Unit Riverine Craft. This one is, in fact, a patrol boat, and is, in fact, used for guarding rivers. However, it is not an RIB, and is, in fact, actually armored. So, yeah, MNC toys mix things up quite a bit. But, back to the toys. Nothing seems to have changed over the years, except for one minor detail. Instead of coming with an M60 machine gun on the front of the boat, the Air and Sea Patrol unit now comes equipped with a spotlight. The two engines, which come detached in the box, have rotating propellers, and seem to attach to the boat quite securely. Which is a problem I faced with the military boat version. The engines didn't really attach to the boat as much as they did just rest on top of it. This doesn't seem to be a problem with the Air and Sea Patrol unit. There's a compartment in the middle of the boat that can be utilized for storing any spare bits, so that's quite nice. In terms of carrying capacity, there's a seat for a driver and a passenger, and the rest is pretty much up to your imagination. If you're going to insist on using Navy SEALs, then you'll probably want to get a few more. And that's pretty much it. The only other detail is this anchor. A nice touch, but I don't have much use for it. Can it float? Oh, it better. It's a watercraft. There's no excuse why it shouldn't float. So, is there anything wrong or any cons with this vehicle? Um... No. Not really. I never thought I'd say this, but this vehicle is kind of perfect. There's really nothing wrong with it. I can't criticize the plastic for being thin and hollow, because that's kind of a given, considering it's a boat. At the end of the day, it's just supposed to be a simple piece of plastic that floats on water. Is there anything I would change? I guess they could have made the spotlight work, or perhaps added real working engines, 
but electronics, though not non-existent in the World Peacekeeper's toy line, are not exactly a modus operandi of MNC toys. Could there be more paint detailing? Sure. But then again, it's World Peacekeepers. I'm not excusing the lack of paint detailing. It's just that military toy collectors buy World Peacekeepers vehicles not despite their lack of detail, but because of their lack of detail. They've always served as a blank slate for customizing. So, yeah, simplistic, effective, and most importantly, cool. This boat is really damn good. The World Peacekeepers Air and Sea Patrol Unit gets a massive seal of approval. See you all later. Yo, Joe.